Hello everybody. Welcome to Brainy Dental. Today I'll be taking up an important long question which is different class to composite preparations. It is very frequently asked in exams and a popular short note that is the differences between composite and amalgam preparations. Let's go ahead and watch. Now if you get this question in the exam, the order which I have followed in this video, you should be following the same order while answering the question. So let's start. Now tooth preparation designs, they vary depending upon the clinical situation. Popularly, there are four designs, conventional, modified class 2 preparation, box only class 2 preparation and slot class 2 preparation. Coming first to class 2 conventional cavity preparation. Now these preparations, they mimic the preparations for amalgam, but they are more conservative than them. Now if you look at the first picture, you will observe that the cavity preparation, it is narrow, having as little facial width as required. Also, these pits and fissures, they are not incorporated in the cavity preparation. And the walls, well, they converge loosely and secondary retentive features, they are usually not given. Now, in the second picture, you can see our occlusal preparation has got completed. The next step is making proximal box preparation. We extend the occlusal surface to the proximal side and then we go deeper in the gingival direction cutting a proximal ditch. Now those of you who have not seen my tutorial on class 2 cavity preparation, please watch it. You will have a clear idea of how to make a conventional class 2 cavity. Well you all know in our next step, now we will take our burr, move towards the facial limit and the ling ling lingual limit of the proximal margin fracturing it. Now in this way our proximal preparation it gets completed. Coming to the gingival margin. Now the decision to bevel the gingival margin requires clin clinical judgment. In the first situation you will see that the proximal box is shallow. Therefore there is sufficient thickness of enamel and this enamel rods are well supported by the dentine so we do not need to bevel it at all. Now in the second situation the proximal box is shallow but there are unsupported enamel rods so we bevel it lightly to remove the unsupported rods but we make sure that the thickness of enamel is not affected. Now in the third situation the proximal box is deep so we cut it deep like this. Now what are we left with? We are left with insufficient thickness of enamel. Now this is not what we want. We can adopt another method in which we can produce an internal bevel like this. In this way we can maintain the thickness of enamel. And like this we can have a preparation having all enamel margin. This is actually what we require so that we have a preparation which has least micro leakage. Now this is the diagram of a completed preparation. It is similar to amalgam but it is narrow and more conservative. Next design type is class 2 modified preparation. Now modified preparation is a scooped out preparation whose depth and extent are dependent upon that of the carious lesion. Now if you look at the photograph you will observe although it is a class 1 cavity but the cavity has no specific wall design or pulpal depth. It is just dependent upon the extent of the carious lesion. Now this preparation is mostly made by using round burrs. Now this is a picture of a class 2 modified preparation. You can see the scooped out design and the preparation lies mostly in enamel with having no uniform axial wall depth. Now in this case the retention is achieved primarily by the micromechanical addition to the surrounding enamel and dentine. That means micromechanical retention. Now when are this indicated? It is indicated in small or moderate sized lesions having enamel margins and for correcting the enamel defects. The third design is class 2 box only preparation. Now box only design involves the formation of a box shaped preparation restricted only to the proximal surface. Now it is indicated when there is only proximal surface involvement with no occlusal lesions. As you can see it in the picture the margin ridge is involved in this tooth as well as in this tooth and there is no occlusal surface lesion present. Now how do we prepare it? The burr is held perpendicular to the occlusal surface and parallel to the long axis of the crown and it cuts through the marginal ridge into the, in the gingival direction. 
The extent of the preparation is determined by the size and depth of the fault and the cable surface margins they are not beveled. Now if you look at the first diagram you will observe that this is the dentino enamel junction and this is the axial wall. Now the depth is here of the axial wall is 0.2 millimeter in the dentino enamel junction. Now supposing there are caries still present then excavation of caries is done in the pulpal direction using a slow speed round burr or a spoon excavator. Now here you can see a completed preparation. It doesn't really have a definite design but it only involves a proximal surface and the margins they are not beveled. The fourth type is class 2 slot preparation. Now facial and lingual slot preparations are restricted to the proximal surfaces of the posterior teeth having access to the lesion either from the facial or the lingual direction. Now if you look at the diagram you will observe that this is the area that is involved and you can access it from a facial or lingual direction. Now we make this slot we are using a round burr and initial axial depth here is about 0.2 millimeter in dentino enamel junction and the cavus surface margins they are about 90 degree or greater. We will now discuss an important short note and important viva questions which is difference in cavity preparation for composite and amalgam. I have taken this table of differences from my book. Now I have made it in a manner that it is very easy to understand as well as learn. Now let's come to the first point. The first point is the outline form. Now in composite we have discussed so far in this video it is conservative and it is limited only to the extent of the legion or the fault whereas in amalgam it we know it is more extensive. Then initial depth for the pulpal floor it is not uniform in case of composite the depth depends upon the depth of the lesion and whereas in amalgam it is uniform. A depth of 0.2 mm is established within the DEJ. Whereas the axial wall, now again the depth depends upon the depth of the lesion. Whereas in amalgam we have a depth of 0.2 to 0.8 mm well established within the dentino enamel junction. Then coming to the cavus surface margin. Now here in composite it is either beveled or it is a butt joint. Whereas in amalgam it is always a butt joint. Now retention form. Now composites they are retained by micro mechanical interlocking which is achieved through etching and bonding. Now whereas in amalgam we know that we have mechanical retentive features. They are incorporated like a clusal convergence of the preparation walls or dovetails. Then resistance form. A definite cavity shape is not indicated. And whereas in amalgam we have box shaped cavity preparation with flat floors and definite line angles. Then pulp protection. Composites they have an insulative effect. They do not require a base. If it is required it is given in the form of calcium hydroxide or resin modified glass ionomer. Whereas in amalgam due to thermal conductivity of amalgams they always require a base. Then coming to secondary retentive features. They are usually not required in case of composites. We always try and avoid them. Whereas in case of amalgams, when there are large lesions or large cavities, we have to give secondary retentive features in the form of pins, slots, locks and grooves. Now this table compiles all the differences. Just prepare it, learn it and reproduce it in your exam. And believe me, you will get full marks. All the best. All the data in this presentation has been taken from textbook of operative dentistry written by me. If you've enjoyed this video, then you like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.